Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of Origin Story. I know this looks like Geeks of the Round Table. It's a different show. Uh, I am your only host. I am here with my first guest, who is my co-host on our other podcast, Geeks of the Round Table, Zach Pope, my longest friend here on YouTube, the person I, I trust the most on the on this space. Zach, how are you doing, my friend? My friend, I'm doing great. Um, I'm very excited to be your first guest and have fun talking my origin story. Yeah, it's it's all about you. This show will be about talking with your favorite content creators and maybe even one day celebrities, actors, directors, writers, whatever, and talk about their origin story, how they fell in love with what they do, with what kind of content they create and how they came into it. So Zach, I'm going to start by the most obvious question and we're going to leave it there, but then eventually we'll get to it uh, in a bit again. Your favorite movie of all time. Let us know what it is. You can only go with one. So don't give me a franchise or a trilogy. Pick okay. One. So obviously, you know, I love Toy Story, but I won't Toy Story. I mean, if I could only live with one film for the rest of my life, it'd be Toy Story. But my favorite film of all time is Wolf of Wall Street. Um, there's something there about that film. Uh, the energy. It's, uh, you know, Martin Scorsese's, you know, he's up in age, but this dude's just killing yeah. it. Every single film. And Wolf of Wall Street's the movie that I could watch every single day for the rest of my life and never regret. I love it to death. I think it's just fantastic. And seriously, one of the most brilliant pieces that I think we've gotten in quite a while, to be completely honest with you. I think it is, I, yeah. it's DiCaprio's best performance. Um, there's just, there's some sort of energy about that film that just hypes me up and makes me want to get out of my bed in the morning and just do the same thing. So yeah. Both Don't we all, there. don't we yeah. all wish we could do all of his things. And <laughs> For people who talk movies, and you've told me this before, people talk movies, they think Hollywood, they think Hollywood, they think Los Angeles. And you were actually born uh, in Los Angeles. Tell me more about that story. Was was one of your parents from Los Angeles and then you eventually moved to Arizona? What What is what, what happened there? So I, I didn't live in L.A., I lived in California. I lived actually like um, in the mountains California. in the Big Bear area. I'm sorry. But we have a lot of friends and stuff mm. that live down there. And um, I mean, I was always in the LA area. And I lived there until I think I was like five or six. But I mean, we would go back every year, like three or four times. Family, Disneyland, Disneyland, and more Disneyland. Um, very fortunate enough that I got to go to Disneyland like 30,000 times in my lifetime. So, you know, I, I love... Um, I love just California and I want to move back one day. Um, not, I don't even care if it's for this. I just love the area. I love the beaches and, but my parents moved us here to Arizona cause my dad's job. And then we were actually supposed to move to Texas. And I said, fuck mm. no. I said, no, <laughs> I said, no, we're not doing that. Uh, I'm staying here. I don't care what you do. I don't care that I'm eight years old. I'm not moving again. Was there a reason why you didn't want to move to Texas? Was it yeah. just because you loved Arizona so much or you just didn't care for Texas? I already had friends. I had friends. I didn't yeah. want to move again. You know, you don't I want to move away that. from your friends. And like, you know, that and that's my thing. Like my closest friends who I'm not even close with anymore, you know, at this point in time. <laughs> I'm not. And, wow, you know, I'm, years old. I, I'm still like in touch yeah. with like two of them, but um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not like mm -hmm. I don't hang out with them every day. But you know, I just I, I wouldn't say I love Arizona. I, I like it more than what I did was when I was younger because it's fucking hot out here. And uh, it's there's not, you know, when you're younger, you're like, there's nothing to do out here. There's a ton when you get to 21. So, but I, I love Arizona. It's a beautiful state and I'm happy that I moved out here. Yeah, it so sounds good, man. And talk to me about what you at least remember or what you can conceive in your memory as your first time not the first time you you realized movies meant something special to you but the first time you remember watching a movie at all and what was it watching a movie at all like my first movie. yeah so i i i can't remember which movie it was that i went to see in the theaters for the first time it's between two it's either mm. toy story 2 or iron giant um mm. i you know I remember the first, I do remember going to the movie theaters for the first time. Again, I just don't remember which movie it was. I remember my family took me and they took, pushed me through the doors and it was this 
darkly lit hallway with at the corner at the end of it there was popcorn like you see these people making popcorn <laughs> and now i'm like this tall compared to my everything else and i'm looking around me and i see posters for toy story and posters for this and po some horror movie over here and i'm like get that away from me and i got scared and my parents took walked me to the theater i'm like where are they taking me and then this picture screen pops up and i'm like oh it's a movie <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember that. Like, I vividly remember doing that. Yeah, no, so sounds good, man. And um, your parents took you on that on that time. But I, I, from the times we talked about, whether on the podcast or just with one another, you also have a, a very close relationship in general, but also when it comes to movies and going to the movies with your grandma. Talk to me about that. Dude, yes. Um, so my love of films came mo like there's a couple people in my life who like you know pushed me towards film you know mm -hmm. my my mom you know take me to the movies show me toy story and stuff like that my dad um you know showed me terminator the predator he showed me the manly things you know he showed me <laughs> the badass stuff i need same to with me and same he showed me. me the horror stuff you know he showed me a creature from black mm -hmm. lagoon gremlins Ooh. you know tremors all that sorts of stuff nice. and then you know, my grandma would take me to the movies twice a week at times. Same, sometimes even more, sometimes less. Nice. But we'd always go to the movies. And she'd always ask me, it didn't matter what movie it would be, she would take me. Um, as long as I looked up and made sure there was no nudity in it, which I did. <laughs> sometimes things would lie. Um, of course. I down, did not know there was a sex scene in there. Very awkward. Pulled out my phone and started playing on it. Because <laughs> it was awkward. But um, I do remember, um, you know, she took me to see Drop of Thunder, man. She took me to see the first Iron Man, Inception. I even got her to take me to see the second Transformers. Ooh. <laughs> um, she, I, I love my grandma. You know, she is a big piece of what made me love films. And um, she's just great. You know, her favorite film of the ever is Gone with the Wind. Um, nice. She bought me a ton of my movies. She bought me my Indiana Jones first box set, um, which wow. opened my eyes. The Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, yeah. um, my third favorite film of all time. Um, and probably my ne my top three never changes. My top three will never change. Um, it'd be very hard for that top three to change. But, you know, she she did that. And, you know, we still go to the movies right now. It's a little bit weird. Um, we yeah. can't. It's a COVID. Um, she's one of the ones that hates wearing a mask. I get it. I get why it gives her a headache and stuff. Um, so, you know, she doesn't want to go sit in a theater and wear a mask the whole time. And I, you know, I totally understand but it. Doing, so. But she's doing the right thing. She's not not liking to wear a mask and still goes out without a mask recklessly. Yeah, she, yeah. she doesn't like wearing a mask, so she stays at home. Yeah, or and she, she'll go yeah. to work and wear the mask there, yeah. you know, because she has yeah. to. But, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's the thing. I wish I could take her to see movies. She wants to see that um, some new uh, Kevin Costner film coming out in November. Oh, yeah, know. the one with uh, Diane Lane. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to take her to see it because yeah. movie theaters. But yeah, so maybe you'll get a sucks. screener and you can and you can watch the screener at home. That, with that her. is true. That is true. Um, yeah. I'm talking about one right now, so hopefully I can. So that way I can do that have, for her. Have you? Have you? I know that's not the point of this. So really quick, have you seen the trailer for that? Actually, I actually haven't. Uh, you haven't. Good. Okay. It looks good, but it looks nothing like you'd expect. You look at the poster, you see the title, you expect, okay, a nice little romantic uh, drama actually. with these two. It's an intense looking thriller. I'm not, I, awesome. I can't say if the movie itself is intense. I haven't seen it, but it looks really intense. Okay. I'm, 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 yeah. the more I've heard about it, the more I'm excited about it. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully, maybe I get to take her again, like you said, watch the screener with yeah. her if she can. And, and, and is she your grandmother on your on your father or on your on, on your mother's side? My dad's side. That's my, my dad's, dad's side. Yeah. So the, the way she she takes you, did you ever inquire about did she do that? Most obviously, yes. But did you ever ask if she did that with your dad as he was growing up? If she educated him into movies and then he went on to educate you? To be honest, the way I understand it, no. Um, she's always loved movies, but my dad was kind of a troublemaker as a kid. Um you know, I love my dad. He's definitely grown into a completely different guy than when he was in high school and stuff. So it seems like he even told me, he goes, I never saw Raiders of the Lost Ark as a kid because I just, I heard the title and said, that sounds Ooh. stupid. And now he's like, it's one oh. of my favorite films, you know? So, but my dad's funny. He has a very particular taste in films. 
Um, I cannot tell you the last film we watched that was new. That Actually, no, I can tell you. The last film we watched that had come out in the last five years, his favorite film he's watched is Terminator Dark Fate. Ooh. Like, I like that movie. Yeah, and he liked Ford V Ferrari, too. He liked that, too. Nice. But Knives Out, thought it was boring. Um, Homecoming, thought it was boring. Star Wars films, don't even get me started on it. Uh, you know, Rise of Skywalker is not one of his favorites. He liked it, but, you know. Um, you know, the list goes on and on for a hype of film. Venom, didn't even finish it. He tried. I'm trying to convince him to watch Spider-Verse. I don't even know if I want him to at this point. So, it's funny. It's funny you don't want to live works. with the, with uh you don't want <clears throat> you don't want to live with a dad that doesn't enjoy Spider Verse. One hundred percent. You're afraid. I, I, yeah. I, that's why I don't even know if I want him to finish the MCU. Because if he, <laughs> dude, if he doesn't like Endgame or Infinity War, oh, it's yeah. just like, what's the point? What's the point, man? Yeah. No, so. I, I totally get you. And um, uh, okay, so I asked you the first time you remember ever seeing a movie, especially in the big in the big theater. What's the first movie that you can recall when you watched it and you were like, okay, I I like this movie thing more than than most things. This this thing of movies is is special to me. When's the first time you realized that? It actually wasn't with a movie. I was with mm. uh, Breaking Bad. Um, I was I was taking a film class in high school, and I was watching Breaking Bad at the same time. And the parallels of what I was learning in that class were bleeding over to breaking bad and it opened my eyes and then made me want to revisit other films and see the differences and you know colors are a big thing like the colors that a mm -hmm. character wears can yeah. indicate what they're feeling you know great gatsby is a big thing if anyone's ever read the great gatsby it's a big thing and that's actually what we were talking about with the great gatsby so then i started paralleling it to breaking bad and i did a whole paper on all the characters and what they wear in breaking bad and because i did the research i vince gilligan yeah. planned that you know, Walter White starts wearing these colorful things and then it starts wearing more darker clothes towards. It's just that that similarity. And then cinematography, I started getting intrigued with, especially with Breaking Bad, like a couple shots in particular, are just absolutely stunning. There's one scene in the final season where you don't see him in frame, but you see him in the reflection of a, a microwave. And they didn't plan on yeah. getting that. They noticed that after. Nice. And they're like, now the shot even looks more beautiful. Um, so yeah. it's insane. It's crazy. Um, but that's the show and that's really made me go back and love filmmaking. Yeah. And, and it's funny that it, that it happens with the TV show. because we were just talking about it. You're, you're not super into TV as, as a principle, mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. go out in search of more TV shows to watch. No. In fact, but when you're... I have to review a TV show, I get stressed because I'm like, damn, yeah. I got to watch all these up and it's overwhelming. Sometimes not, you know, if I like the show, it doesn't matter, but it still is overwhelming. Like knowing, okay, Thursday night, you know, Mandalorian's coming up. I got to watch it, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I completely understand. And only one week to go for that. Oh my God. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm and so when, <laughs> Yeah, same. And when do you think, so you realize with Breaking Bad, especially you want to study it, you want to analyze it, you want to talk about it. Going to the movies and as you reach that age where you start going, not necessarily just with your friends and you leave your parents at home, but as you start coming to the age of wanting to talk about movies afterwards, did you get that that desire, whether it was with your parents or or, or it emerged as you went on with, with friends alone, without the parents, because you could see any yeah. movie you wanted or sneak into movies. When did that desire start to emerge? Was it after or before that that Breaking Bad experience? So I it's probably right around the same time, to be honest, um, because I, I'd all I, again, I'd see movies every fucking time. And I'd always want to talk about them. Um, but I definitely started realizing it more um, and remembering like me doing this probably my freshman year of high school, which was a little bit before I started watching Breaking Bad because um, I started watching it my sophomore year. And my freshman year of high school, I, me and my friend, you know, and my grandma, same thing. But I, I so I'd probably go to the movies at least three, four times a week at this point. My grandma would take me twice. I'd go with my friend twice because his mom is also a big indicator of this. She'd give us money to go see movies every nice. single week. So we saw, dude, the original Avengers, we saw in theaters probably like 30 times that summer. Wow. Because there was no other movie, so we just watched that. True. Um, and me and him would sneak in the movies, snuck in the Cabin in the Woods, Prometheus, uh, That's My Boy, got kicked out of that one, so I've never seen that film. 
sadly. We have to go watch Madagascar 3, which is fun. That's awesome. Because we were the only ones in the theater. We were the only oh, ones in the theater. Oh, my God. Um, Prometheus, we went in, sat next to a couple, and said, can you please pretend to be our mother and dad? <laughs> they said yes. Um, and then Cabin in the Woods, I don't know how we got away with that one. We were the only ones in that theater, too. Um, but no one checked or anything. It was the same theater, too. Um, but definitely around that time, I remember... You know, we'd sit around. I'd sit and talk with movies about my with my friends all the time. But it would be the point where, like, I'd show up and we'd start talking, and I would just bring up movies and video games, and they would make it. Yeah. They'd make you know they'd make fun of it. They're like, "What? Why?" Like, mm. and I'm like, they'd make a bet. They literally make a bet on how long it took me to reference a movie, <laughs> uh, which pissed me off. You know, which is funny now because like I'm still th- those are my four main friends. I'm still friends with, and you know, all of them are like. I take them to an early screen and they're like, I never thought this would ever like come to this. It's so fucking cool. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it is. Like one of my friends have taken every single MCU screener, which is the one that his mom would give us money to. And, um, you know, I have another friend that I take to all the kind of the weird stuff. I have another friend who I take to anything because he's the general movie going audience. And it's just, it's very eye opening, you know, looking back and I'll tell you this. I wish I would have started YouTube earlier. I wish I wasn't so insecure. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest regret. I wish I would have started in high school. Yeah, that, that's something I want to get into too. But you you now brought it up that you, you talked about movies to the point where people made bets about how long would it take you. Growing up, where it was middle school, high school, at any point, were you like the guy that talked about movies and nobody else wanted to talk about it? Did you ever feel alone in that regard? Because maybe... You talked about movies. Someone said, oh, I saw that too. I liked it. You wanted to continue the conversation, but they were like done with it and they wanted to talk about something yeah. else. Did you ever feel alone in that sense? All the time. Um, and again, my friends were into movies. Like they were into movies, but yeah. like they always want to talk about other things too. And I'm like, no, let's keep talking movies. Like, because this is the thing I've noticed growing up, especially now. It's, a, it's cool to be a nerd. It's fucking cool to be a nerd. Dude, I used to be so self-conscious of showing people my room. Because it wasn't. Uh, it yeah, wasn't. and that's the thing. Like, I would bring people over, and they'd be like, "This is weird, blah blah blah." So, like, yeah. I sold a lot of my stuff when I was younger, and went for more hip and you know, <laughs> skater because I was in the skating, skateboarding too. So yeah. I'd have a bunch of skate. And then I said, "Well, fuck you, fuck you." I like, I fucking like Star Wars toys. I like being a man. I buy them more than my fucking kids, you know. Like, <laughs> and so then I said, "I'm gonna embrace it." And you know, it's so funny. I don't know when the turn happened. I'd probably say it was around 2014 to 2015. Like when Captain America Civil War came out in Guardians that I started noticing that people didn't matter if you were a geek. It didn't matter who you were. Like you just liked movies and you liked this type of stuff and you were cool. And I'm like, why wasn't this in high school? Yeah. You say you like Star Wars. It's a big thing. You say you like Lord of the Rings. It's a big thing. You say you play video games. It's a big thing. And it, it's so funny now because, like, I have people who walk in my room. They're like, this is so fucking cool. This yeah. is so – my girlfriend walks in my room. And, you know, she's a she's a geek too. But she walks in my room. She goes, I find something new every single time I walk in. <laughs> you know, and it, it's just so crazy to see how that happens, you know. And there's people I've become friends with just because of movies. There's people from high school that I wasn't even really close with, but they hit me up when we talked movies. You know, it, it's crazy like that. There are multiple people in high school. That it's not like they bullied me or anything. We just different friend groups, but yeah. they'll hit me up. You know, we are just acquaintances, and we'll talk movies. And it's crazy how that works now. It is, it is, and and it's very recent because, as you said, it, it's cool to be a nerd now. But that wasn't that was never the case a no. long time ago. And then it you only we are the top dude. We got the cool yeah. shit. It only you know? turned around a few years ago, man. It's very, it's a very recent thing. Mm-hmm. I hope, I hope it lasts. Now, my next question has has two intentions. Number two, I really want to ask you this and go on, but I'm also curious because flashback for someone new, maybe watching this. I, I'm not American, and my education system is very different. So, how is it there to be? A kid who loves movies and how is your education different is it like a very general education through middle school and through high school and eventually you follow something that that uh that goes along with the path you want to go in life and when you get a job and after finish school how is it over there tell me about it so you know we have elementary school 
uh, mm -hmm. first grade through or first grade through sixth grade, then middle school, which is seventh through eighth, and then okay. high school, which is ninth through twelfth. Um, then mm -hmm. there's college, um, and you know, I don't. I think my school system sucked. I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't think I learned that much. I taught myself a lot, especially college. I'm teaching myself a lot. And that's my honest, that's, that's my choice. You know, I don't, I don't, I like doing online stuff more if I can. Um, but when it comes to like elementary school, the thing about school, I believe like going into a public setting and I don't like, if you've never, if you, if you're homeschooled, that's fine. That's cool. Like, honestly, that's awesome. But the thing I think about public school is it made me not be shy um mm -hmm. i used to be really shy but it i you know i it made me more social and i learned more things faster than others would probably learn and but it's funny because my major has nothing to do with filmmaking it's business um and i chose that on purpose because i wanted to do film stuff but as i was taking film classes i learned i had taught myself all of this already all of this so I wanted more of the mentality of how Dwayne The Rock Johnson has is a business mentality when it mm. comes to thinking. Um, because when I started this YouTube stuff, I want to do short films. And to be flat out honest, I still want to do, I still want to write scripts, write a book. That's my end goal is to write that stuff and still do, like, I'll never stop doing reviews. I'll never stop doing that stuff. I'll still always do it. But that's my goal is to do that element, um, getting to acting, stuff like that. Because I, that's my passion. But the business side, I also want to know because I want to know how to run a film. I want to know how to run a studio. I want to know how to run my own business because that's what I want to do. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to, there's so many different ideas that I have. And going through this business major, I've been able to learn that more side of the business, especially with working in retail and all that stuff for the last, you know, ever since I could get a job. I've worked the same, not the same position, but the same company because. They're flexible. If I yeah. want to leave to go do something, most of the time <laughs> they say yes. Yeah, true. And and so if if everything went right and you do get into film as a as a profession, do you see yourself? Of course, you want to do shorts and you want to write scripts and you want to write a book. But do you see yourself more? Let's say you get into Hollywood. Do you see yourself as a producer? mainly because that sounds like the the mindset and the attitude of a, a producer i mean this is in a good way <laughs> yeah um both um i want to both. produce act write direct um everything i want to produce your first film i want to oh. you know i want to i want to roll in it i don't care if it's this thing you know if i gotta play this thing with no face that's fine with me um to be honest with you though you know the one thing i really want to do and i have no idea how to do it is voice acting Oh, I. This isn't about me, so I'll say this briefly. I, I took a course. I took a course, a quick, cor a short course on on voice <laughs> acting once, um, and 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 it's really it's really cool. It's it's simpler than you expect in some ways. It's more complex and complicated yeah. in others. And that and that's why I want to do it because I know how so many voices. You know, I I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. I got Mickey Mouse's voice because you know you want to hear a joke, Red? Yeah. You want to hear a joke? Do you know why I divorced Minnie? Why? Because she was literally fucking goofy. She was literally fucking goofy, Ren. She was literally fucking goofy. She got mad because I was fucking the princesses at the castle. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and this is what I do, dude. I work. I just talk to myself and do a bunch of fucking different voices. Sounds fucking weird, but like... I'll walk up to like a random coworker and be like, I'm pregnant right now with my third child. You know, it's a, it's a simple shit like that. And I, I'm motivated by Sasha Baron Cohen. I want my friend we're talking about it. I want to make my own Borat. I want yeah. my friend to dress up like some fucking Kazistan or it doesn't even matter. And go and interview people. Yeah. You you dress up as Kazakhstan is taken, so I say you dress up as I don't know, an Estonian and, yeah. and go interview people. Yeah. And that's it. Well, I asked about friends and I asked about school in general. How about when it comes to, to romantic relationships? How was that, that different? Were you always lucky that the person you were with enjoyed movies and was kind of a geek? Was there not always the case, unfortunately, and you just didn't see a future? How is it there? Uh, so I'm very fortunate right now because the girl I'm with, um, yes. she's fantastic. She's, she supports me 
greatly. And it's not to say that others didn't support me, um, but she is support. She's my number one fan. I mean, that and that's the truth. Like she pushes me. She pushes me out of my comfort zone. Um, that's definitely. always great. I'm very hesitant when coming out of my comfort zone. There's a couple things that I'm working on right now that I haven't even told you. I'm not going to say I'm on here yet because I have more oh. of a thing. I have a thing in my brain where I don't like to speak it into the world unless it's true. Mm. Um, unless I think it's like a, an 85 to 99% going to happen type thing. You know? I get you. Um, if I know that's a thing, I'll speak it. I'll tell people. Um, but she's my confidant. So I tell her and I let her know like, hey, this is like what's going on, all this stuff. And I like the thing I'm doing right now. Um, she's the one that pretty much said, you got to do it. You got to try it because I'm always worried about the no, you know, I'm always worried about not getting a reply back. And um, mm. so she's a big part of that. But before her, you know, because me and her, start, and I'm sorry if you're watching this, um, me and her started out as friends with benefits. Um, mm -hmm. And we we're just best friends. We we're just best friends. And then it turned into more. And awesome. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. But before that, you know, there was a time where, so back in high school, which I don't, I don't think she'll ever see this, so I'll say it, just no names. Um, back in high school, um, I was in a two-year relationship, my last two years, um, and I was cheated on many, many times, which completely fucked me up. Um, still kind of messes me up. Um, I don't hate, I don't hate her. I don't hate anything about it. Um, in fact, it turned me into the person I am. You know what I mean? Like I. I wouldn't change a thing. Maybe if I could go back in time and tell myself, hey, break up with her a little sooner. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but, you know, we had some tough stuff. So um, I actually wrote a whole short film around that. And I never made it. I never did anything of it. I actually, we filmed it. We recorded it. I started editing and I said, I'm done. This is, If I even put this out there in the world, like I just feel like I hurt myself. And I'm more over this whole situation now from doing the recording, the editing, and the the writing aspect that putting it actually out there i have it done somewhere it's just for me to watch though um actually i probably deleted it to be flat out honest with you <laughs> and i didn't uh, hate it i like I, I was it. gonna i was gonna ask if i could see it not not to show it here but if i could yeah. see it if i can find it i'll show you it i just gotta dude okay. i have no idea where the fuck it's at i have files on files on my laptop like th there's days i look at my laptop i'm like i just want to reset everything they just like delete everything and reset it I um, feel you. I got a I got a folder on my on my on my desktop. I'm I'm looking at it right now uh, on my front page called screenplay. Sometimes I go down there. And I'm like, what what is this? Oh, yeah. this yeah. Like photos, screenplays, yeah. Uh, book ideas, outlines, uh, tons of stuff. But you know, like this girl cheated on me. Um, and she was not into movies, but her dad really was. So her dad Ooh. would take us to movies too. I mean, him would talk about him a lot. And her dad's really cool. I liked her dad. I liked her mom. Um, and again, I don't hate her. I don't hate her at all. But I never wanted to share her with this. I started doing this YouTube stuff when I was towards the end of our relationship. And I didn't tell her I was doing it till maybe a little bit. Because I didn't... Actually, the only reason she found out was because her stepdad found out. Oh. Found a, video, found a review. And then gave it to her. And that's a whole thing. But, you know, I just... I felt like she wasn't into that. You know, she wasn't, she would make fun of me for being a geek. And there's some other things that I found out about that later on through mutual friends, through some of her friends who were very honest to me after that whole relationship. So that kind of opened my eyes. And, you know, for pretty much two years, I was a lone wolf, you know, focusing on myself, which I liked because then I did the YouTube stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I, I dated like two other people in between there, but you know, while it never got super serious, you know, um, some kind of, some not, you know, YouTube was still my passion. Um, and, you know, I went through some depressed spills, you know, still dealing with that relationship that I was very much affected by. And honestly, recently, I was finally over that, like probably within the last year and a half, I finally got over the whole thing. And, you know, I wouldn't say I was like over hurt, you know, but I'm talking about like, the trust, you know, that trust issue yeah. that you have after that. That's the thing that I was finally over. You know, I was yeah, like, I you finally, you finally opened your doors again. Yeah, I can finally opened my doors and be like, I'm going to trust people again. You yeah. know what I mean? Let um, someone in. Yeah. And and that's who this is now. You know what I mean? That, that's mm -hmm. who I'm right now. I, I, she showed me it was okay. 
Um, but YouTube definitely was like my big thing of like opening up, moving on. And after that, I literally, you know what I told myself, friend? I said, I'm about to buy a bunch of geek shit. <laughs> I literally said that. I said, I'm about to buy fucking everything I ever wanted. And uh, <laughs> it was totally worth it, you know? Um, yeah. And there's things that I quit out of because of her that I I don't regret necessarily, but I miss. Um, I was in track and field. I was varsity. I don't know if you guys have varsity out there. Do you? Uh, I, I have a general idea of what it is, but we don't have at least that term or that category okay. i think yeah, there's like oh, junior and then there's varsity and varsity is like yeah. your main team you're the main go-to and i was varsity yeah. every year through high school and you know i was planning you know i was good if, if i honestly would have trained harder because i did the bare minimum of stuff <laughs> i probably could have been i don't want to say the best because we actually do like the kid i went to high school with is like top ninth like ninth fastest kid in the state for nice. three, three mile race love him love him to death tyler day you are awesome. I love talking movies with you as well. Um, and your whole family, your sister and everything. For That's me, what he watches. Hey, uh, he watches some stuff, so maybe. Nice. Um, but, and it's like, for me, it's like, you know, I miss the running. I miss, and I want to get back into that. And I told myself, after I graduate next month, if I do pass all my classes, I will, like, I have so many things. Like, I'm going to have so much more time opened up that you guys aren't even ready. Like, <laughs> you guys are not ready for this, you know? So... <laughs> I should have asked this one sooner, but now that we got a little bit more uh, into into school and, and education, and we'll get back to, to relationships and, and when it relates to movies and whatnot, but um, how were you as a student, like growing up through, through, through elementary, through middle, through, through high school, were you like a really good student, straight A's, upper B's, were you like a middle, middle student, you pass and, it, and it's just fine where you're like at the skin of your teeth, you just passed and you had to make a big effort to pass. To be honest, like I said, my school was very, very easy, man. I, okay. I could do the fucking bare minimum. I, I remember math was always my worst subject, Same. but I had a couple math teachers that would like go through and check our homework at the mm -hmm. very beginning of class, but he would go in alphabetical order. Well, my name is Zach. So I'm always last, but he would put the answers up on the board. So I just oh sit there God. and write them all down, come over. Oh yeah, I'm done. Um, yeah. And I did that a lot. Uh, math is not a great subject for me. Um, like I said, but uh, I definitely, you know, I had a couple teachers that were very harsh and I respect them because they showed me a lot of who I was, mm -hmm. you know, like, but this definitely, this, like some classes, majority of my classes, I, Dude, I'd do my homework at school. I'd come home and watch fucking movies and video games and play TV. You know, that's what I would do. So I had it very easy. I had it very easy. Well, uh, lucky. That's that's really lucky, man. All right. Going back a little bit to what we were just talking about, that is relationships and movies. Again, the person you're with right now, um, and I know we, we have to talk in code, kind of, but... Uh, the little I've interacted with her, and it's more through you. That, in fact, I think it's all through you. Um, mm -hmm. But if, from what I gather, she's a, she's a wonderful person, and yeah. you're both yeah, in, hereditary. And you're she does exactly. That's why she's a great person. Um, <laughs> Dude, look, literally, you guys have like very similar tastes when it comes to certain movies. See, and like, I'm a, she, I'm a wonderful person too. Yeah, and she always asks me, she goes, what's Ren think about this? And I'll be like, yeah, he doesn't like that movie either. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah. That's why I fear my my ears get hot sometimes. I feel, oh, somebody's talking shit about me. It's probably Zach because his girlfriend agrees with me. Yeah, I'm like, fuck that boy. He made me watch Hachi. Told her to watch, made me watch Hachi. <laughs> you loved Hachi because I of me. Yeah. I loved it, dude. But you'll I... never watch it again. Oh, no, never. Yeah, never. Same. It's, like, it's probably been like 10 years since I watched it. And Good. I, I, don't I, have, it. I have no desire to go back at it again. Not because it's bad, but I don't want to go through the torture. And so you're very you're very lucky to be with her. Uh your your guys are both yeah. awesome. Um how how did that how did uh, you told me how that kind of started and evolved and how is that she pushes you out of of your comfort zone in every regard i hope not just with the channel but everything you want everything. to do uh personally professionally uh, i hope um and 
what are the plans? I know what are your plans, but do you have plans together like after you finish um your your major? Uh yeah, so we both have plans, man. Like we're we're figuring it out, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um COVID especially now, yeah. COVID put everything to stop. Um she has she has plans for her professional career and once she gets there like like we both have our like little end goals like once we hit this spot then we can go to that next step you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, yeah. like we're like if this is the door to get to the next step we're right outside of it it's like mm -hmm. we just got to get the key to open the door mm -hmm. we both got to hit that next thing um, whether it's me graduating, finding something that kind of just supports it a little bit more so I can do this on the side, um, or whether it's where she's trying to go. We have those end goals, you know, so, and that's, and that's our plans. And she's honestly probably way closer than I am. Um, so, and you know, they always awesome. are, they always yeah, are, <laughs> always are girls are smarter than boys. Remember that run. That's women, true. women. I mean, Margot Robbie, man, uh, Olivia Wilde. I mean, yeah, it goes on and on. So very, very true. Very true. All right. Getting back into movies a little bit. We talked about your first movie. We talked about the first time you realized movies and filmmaking was special. We talked about what you want to do. You, you love the producer side, and but you also want to do everything else or at least explore it. Mm -hmm. How was that first? You, you like talking about movies after watching them and even at all times, uh, which I relate to. When was the first time where you maybe saw a movie review on YouTube or maybe read some article on one of the on a, one of the main websites or newspapers or like movie review and you're like, "Huh. I could I could do this. Do I want to do this? How did you first explore that?" Um man, uh Schmoes, Jeremy Johns, Chris Stuckman. I mean, though those are the uh the holy the, trinity. Yes. Um man, I it's funny because like on my, cause I'm a part of the Phoenix film critics society and on my bio, I literally thank a bunch of different people who nice. got me there. You know, let me see if I can pull it up right now. It's, this website is kind of dumb. Okay. It's not working, but I thank the likes of a lot of them because they pushed me there. Um, I can tell you the review though, that I remember I'm watching. Please tell me. And I remember going, it, and necessarily this is the it wasn't the movie that made me go i want to i want to do this mm -hmm. it made me go i fucking love movies more yeah and i hadn't seen the movie yet it was enemy it was the enemy ending uh, explained that chris duckman did yeah uh, and the same with his babadook review i can literally tell you what i was doing while i was listening to that review i was playing call of duty listening to that review i'm like this sounds like the best fucking movie i've ever could watch and i literally stopped that day and went and watched it um <laughs> And I, again, I just, you know, there's something about each and every one of them. And, you know, the same thing goes for William Bibiani, um, Scott Mance, Alicia Malone. Um, I'm drawing a blank on a couple others, but all of them have really grown into me and made me appreciate film. And I always thought I could do this. I just don't know how to. And yeah. then you teach yourself. Um, you know, I, I've started everything I've ever done on YouTube. I've done from the most basic thing starting. My phone, my laptop, and a cheap editing software. And, you know, I've obviously grown a little bit out of that now. But for the most part, it's still my phone, lighting, a microphone now, and depending on what video I'm doing, a different editing software. Mm. Um, and that was always my thing. I wanted to, my emphasis on starting this was anyone can do what I'm doing. Yeah. That was my on it anyone can do what i'm doing this is the time to start so anytime someone asks sorry i want to start a youtube channel how do i do it i tell them start start now mm -hmm. now go so. yeah and, and was it long before you decided okay i want to do this was it long before you made that decision you said that to yourself and then you effectively started because i, I know and we'll get to it there was one video put up you stopped and then about a year later you came back yeah um you know, I wanted to do it for so long. And then my grandma got me a really nice laptop from nice. her graduation. And I said, let's do it. I went and saw Inside Out. I was just like, I want to talk about it. I don't have any other friends that saw it besides my sister. Reviewed it. Terrible review. Fucking looks awful. My first 30 fucking five reviews that I probably did are all terrible. 
maybe the first hundred. Um, and then I figured out lighting and microphone, mm -hmm. and I said I should probably invest in this since I enjoy yeah. it so much. Even if I don't know if it's gonna go anywhere, I should invest in this. Um, and Inside Out was definitely that first review. And then after that, I went and saw, um, and then, I don't know, I did a couple more. And then I stopped because it wasn't really going anywhere. I wasn't doing it in the right mindset. I was like, I want to make money. I want to see free things on it. Yeah. When you have that mentality, you're not going to go anywhere. So then I saw Batman v Superman early. Um, I won tickets to go see it early. And I walked out and I typed up this fucking huge thing on Facebook talking about the film. And my friend literally told me, he goes, why aren't you doing your videos anymore? And I said, I don't know. He goes, you should do one about Batman v Superman. I didn't. I really should have. I probably would have gone. I, I didn't have to follow an embargo at that time. Yeah. I, I, I probably literally would have gotten, you know, however many views. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so then after that, a couple months passed. And me and my friend, my friend was working at AMC at the time. So he'd get us in the movies for free. Um, so we went and saw Central Intelligence and Finding Dory. Double feature that. Went home, reviewed. I said, I'm going to do a review for these. I'm going to review it. Recorded my review for both. Put them up. And, you know, they did fine. They did fine. But I enjoyed it. And I told myself, I'm going to take Thursday nights off. Every Thursday night, I'm going to go see these movies. And if I can, if I win early tickets, I'll go wait. And I did it every single time. Alien Covenant. The nice the nice guys. Um, uh, Cure for Wellness. <laughs> It went on and on and on. And then I had a couple friends go, why don't you try like applying to websites? You know, you we go you go to these screenings. They come with me and they're like, the press empty, the press section's empty. Why aren't you sitting there? I said, you're right. Um, so then I emailed out a couple people and that's what brought me into Sandwich John Films. Um, There's three websites, um, but the, he was the one that I felt the most comfortable with. Um, mm -hmm. Very awesome guy. Uh, I love his whole motto for it and you know why he was pretty much doing the same thing I was doing. He wanted that early access. He wanted that stuff. He wanted the, you know, the fun things that you get with being press member. And he took me in and you know, God, that's, there's so much that I've gotten through this, which I'm sure you can talk yeah. about and ask me, but yeah, so that yeah. that's where, where it went. So within, you know, I would say I've done this for five years. The first year was me fucking around. Yeah second year was me also fucking around and then the third year was the the end of the second year was i should really take this serious the third year went oh i should reach out and then now i'm been doing the same thing for however yeah. long I, I was about to ask that so uh, for sandwich john films you were the one who reached out yes reached yeah. out and was it was it like easy to find how how did you find these these sites and and how how would you advise someone who, who's new to this and wants to try it out as well and wants to take a chance at at reaching out um, how would you advise them to do it so going to the advanced screenings they would always thank all the people who gave out advanced screening tickets mm -hmm. sandwich Shop films was one of them so i reached out to all the other ones um and again i liked what he said i liked our conversation that we had and he was the one that I very much liked the most. Um, the other ones, you know, didn't seem the best fit, if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. um, I'm not talking down to them or anything, they just didn't seem like the best fit. He pretty much was like, you do your review, keep them on your channel, I'll put them on my site. I said, okay, that works for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's not like I was getting Black Panther right off the bat. It's not like I got Last Jedi right off the bat. Mm -hmm. My first press screening was Last Flag Flying. Um, then after mm. that, it was christmas carol movie with uh, dan stevens and it was these smaller yeah. films and i would go to every single one of them and then yeah. it got to the point where my first big press screening i guess would technically be justice league but it felt like everyone kind of got that in the united states it was black panther when i got black panther i said i made it i yeah. fucking made it. and uh it was awesome it was awesome getting that invite and you know um i love getting i love being the first one to be like i i can join i'm good i'll be there and um it really opened up that door and uh, I love what uh, John was able to bring me into. And again, it's, I've opened up a lot more relationships and with a lot of other people now. Mm -hmm. And, and it's awesome. You, you really skyrocketed. How is it um, without veering too much into our next topic, how is it to, so you guess you get the press screenings. Then there's another thing you now not 
not that you just got it now, but you get also sometimes the the bundles, the free stuff, the the promotional bags and promotional boxes and whatnot. How do you get access to that? Do you also get contacted, or do the studios, the reps contact to Sandwich John, and then he sends it to you? Can I be flat out honest? I have no idea. You have no. <laughs> so some of so like the Borat one I got yesterday, the mm. cost. Yeah. I, that's through Sandwich John Films, but it's like because we're on a press list because of the Phoenix Film Critics Society that yeah. I'm in. Mm -hmm. So that's because um, we get random stuff for just okay. that. You know, like I got a Hellboy Funko when the film was coming out. I have an Irishman art book. It, it's it can vary. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like that DC Fandom box I got. Yeah. I got an email saying, "Hey, do you want something for DC Fandom?" I said, "Well, yeah." <laughs> I have I can't tell you how I'm on that list. I don't know. I just. Sometimes they get mm -hmm. random emails, and I'm it's, like, "It's probably for, because you're on the um, on the um, Phoenix Film Critics." Part of that, and I think a lot of it is also going to film festivals. It always asks, yeah. it always asks, "Do you want to opt in for people to send you emails?" Yeah. I would say yes yeah, because you never know who's going to send you an email. You know what I mean? Like, I told you about one email I got yesterday that I'm like, "Yeah, well, yeah, no fucking shit, I'll take that offer." Yeah. That yeah. There. So, um, for sure. So yeah, and it's just it's just weird. Um, there's still a couple lists I want to get on, especially for the free Blu-rays. That that's the one I'm working towards right now, which yeah. is more of a pain in the ass than I thought it would be. Um, mm. They're very stingy. You have your numbers have to be very, very. very high. But then I know people who don't have high numbers, and I'm like, yeah, I, I was about to say that. I know people who get the Blu-rays and their numbers are they're bigger than mine for sure, but they're not anything special, and they get so I was I wasn't even going to ask about that. I'm glad you you brought it up. I, really did. I wish I could. I wish I because like the reason I've gotten some early is because some of the reps that work out here, I'll talk to them and on, and they'll be like, "Hey, do you want to review the Blu-ray?" I'm like, "Yeah." So then they'll send it early, you know, if they get yeah. any. Um, yeah, for sure. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. For sure, and. So going back to to YouTube specifically and your channel and what you do on video, starting out um, after after so you do Inside Out, you knew a few others, you stop, then you come back with Central Intelligence and Dory, and then you start going, and the train starts rolling, and you just keep going. How was it to reach out and just started making friendships with fellow reviewers? Because you're you're pretty close from what I gather with with Griffin Schiller from from Film Speak. You're pretty close with others. Were you the one that started like, let me go to this person's co uh, commentary section and hope that they come back and check out my videos? Or was it the other way around? So to be honest, so if you go look at all my reviews, so I'm actually looking at them right now. Um, can I share my screen? Yeah. Okay. Let me share this. You can do whatever you want. It's about you. This episode is all about you. So this is what it shows on my channel. Um, this is my mm -hmm. first review yeah. going forward, which I actually really like these thumbnails. really like some of those. Um, so going through, you know, we did all this. I was still trying to find my stride. You know, I have yeah. like weird blogs in here that make no sense. Um, I have. I was still trying to figure out. And then my favorite reviews I ever did was my Walking Dead ones because I did them with my friends. Uh, we mm -hmm. did like a round table like from Collider, kind of our own yeah. view of it. Um, but so, yeah, so all these, then I did like video game stuff, which I am bringing this back. I love doing, I don't care if this guy, I remember seven. those. I don't give a fuck if this got seven views. I loved it. <laughs> this was the review that blew up. This was the first one that blew up because I broke embargo and I didn't know there was an embargo because I, oh. I went to an early screening. No one said anything. So I reviewed it. Yeah. Um, but definitely like from here on out, I, I need to re-review Logan, by the way, because my Logan audio is fucked up and I was too tired to re-review it. <laughs> But so, you know, it started from there and it just continuously went down. And then Tom Hardy is Venom three years ago. This is like, <laughs> I went out to my car and did a live stream of me talking about it, you know, and this is kind of the attitude I'm trying to get back to. Um, and I yeah. told myself after this month, I want to get back to it of more of the, I'm doing a video because I want to do it, not because I have to do it. Yeah. And that's the two I'm trying to go back to. Um, because I was at one point doing videos just because I was to do a video, you know, so necessarily... What was the question again? I got off topic. Um, so how did you go about making friendships and starting to get oh. to know other fellow movie reviewers? Was it you that reached out or was it the other way around? So that's actually a really good question. So if you go and look at a lot of these reviews, there are comments from Ryan O'Toole, Sean mm -hmm. Chandler, Griffin, um, and a couple others. I just never replied back to them. 
because I was shy. I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't want to start a conversation. Now it's the complete opposite. You know, um, I think Sean Chandler was literally like one of the first comments on one of my videos. And now I look back at that. I'm like, Oh shit, that's crazy. Same yeah. thing with the <laughs> film. And to be honest, I can't tell you when it started happening. I think it happened when Ryan O'Toole started doing Rotten Refresh. And um, my first collaborator I ever did was Adam Daly. He reached out to me. He goes, I want to do something with you. I said, cool, let's do it. Then after that, I did one with Cody Curtis for it. And then, you know, I reached out to you because I looked up to you, man. I like, I, I loved your reviews. I loved your background. I loved all that stuff. So I reached out to you and, you know, me and Griffin bonded over Pop Funkos. You know, um, Tyler Tompkins and me became friends through Griffin. Um, Sean Chandler and me, you know, just through talking movies on this space, Rotten or Fresh. And that's where all these came about was just, you know, a lot of it was Rotten or Fresh. That's really yeah. where it started out. And I have to thank Ryan because that's what brought me into this space. Because I look at it as there's like sections of YouTube of reviewers that yeah. you know, there's the fucking million dollar club. That's pretty <laughs> yeah. up the schmo, the Jeremy, you know, they're all up there. Then I would say we're next. I would literally say we are next. I'm and flattered then, to be to be mentioned in that club. There's three tiers, and that's how I look at it. Is you know, there's that, there's the gods that we look up to, mm -hmm. and then there's us who I think are the next generation, and then there's the people under us who are just getting started, um, mm -hmm. and figuring out their own stride. That where we were, and you know, in five years we could be in that next generation. We could be the next alter tier, and the, everyone's moving up consistently, or maybe it takes longer than that. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But you know, and that's and that's what's just moved me about, you know, is just having those conversations and just meeting people. And now I, you know, meeting through the comment sections like one of the biggest things. I might not re, re I might not write back to every comment. I read every comment though. I read every comment. Um, even the shitty ones. Uh, I got a shitty one today about Mulan and I typed up this big thing and I said, not even worth it. Not even worth it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, I'm not going to change your mind, man. I'm not going to change yeah. your mind. So, yeah. no, the, you're right. And going into comments, I'm glad you you not only brought it up, but went so much into it. How how do you deal with not necessarily the comments that just disagree with you because those aren't necessarily bad. I get lots of those that that uh, are really polite and generally want to just talk, even though they disagree. I'm sure you get those too. But how do you deal with the troll comments, the offensive comments, and how did you deal with them before? Has that changed at all up until now with how you deal with them? Tell me about it. It's changed uh, pretty badly. Um, okay. I used to just ignore them. But now I just get fucking pissed and I will straight up just go off on them. Um, and it's bad because I will, if you leave a shitty comment, I probably reply back to it more than the nicer comments. So I'm trying to do the reverse of that now. If it's a bad comment and if I notice a review is getting a lot of those, like obviously they're like attacking me. You know what I mean? Like there's a group of them. I just turn off the, I'm just going to start turning off the comment section at that point. I don't care mm -hmm. anymore. The reviews, however months old. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Like my unpregnant one is being attacked. Uh, my Mulan one is being attacked. I'll probably hold off a little bit longer on Mulan because I'm still getting some money from that review. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't care. Um, but that's where the comment was left today. And I'm just like, I'm not paid. I wish I was paid. I wish I yeah. was paid to fucking say I love that movie. I made like fucking $20 off that review. Like now. Like fuck you guys. Um... <laughs> But, you know, I, I I just, I you know, my girlfriend tells me, just don't reply back to them. Don't reply back to them. And I'm like, but I want to. I want to. Because, you know what, some of the ones I have gone off on, they apologize. There are ones that literally apologize and go, I'm sorry, like, I get your point of view. You know what I mean? Okay. And those are the ones that I'm like, fucking thank you. Thank you. You get it. And then there are ones who are just like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally get you. So Zach, we still have a little bit time left. So you can I, long you want, man, you got I, questions. I keep doing it. But I want to know what is the thing you're most proud of from the moment you started up until now? And what's, let's say the next thing you want to really be proud of on your channel. Uh, so I got a personal one and 
just a channel thing. Personal mm -hmm. one, it made me more social, made me more secure about who I am. And it also made me just try different things. Um, and also bring in my friends into this because I, I have something else to share um, that I Go have. Um, I have a short film channel. Um, these are not, I would not say they're masterpieces. Um, <laughs> this was my first short film. These are all up to watch. They're all public. Uh, I made a music video. Do you have a um, Pokemon one? I have a Pokemon one. It's oh. called PGA. Pokemon Go Addicts Anonymous. Um, we filmed it like The Office. I'll even show a little bit oh, of it. Oh, nice. Um, don't give me a copyright strike, man. No, 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 you won't. I don't have a copyright strike on this. No, no, but because you're you're playing it, YouTube, like they give me a copyright strike with oh. no with no reason, even though you're playing it. That's <laughs> that would be the but stupidest. Yeah, so I definitely go say go watch this because the beginning of it is all filmed like we made our own office thing, like in the beginning, like through yeah. all of the and um it's 30 it's it's way too long it's way too long um there when i watch it now i'm like i would cut that i would cut that i would cut that i would cut that character out completely i would cut that i would cut i, I, I could have gotten that damn thing down to like probably 10 minutes or less but i love it um on the run uh it's kind of my like last of us inspired short film uh yeah. return my horror comedy um, totally cheesiness. What's next was supposed to actually be a sequel to On the Run, but I changed <laughs> the script midway through and changed it completely. Um, Itsy Bitsy is probably my most proud. I am most proud of this one okay. because I tried. It was only me, my friend Melissa and Corey. Melissa was our actor. They're both dating. Love them to death. I hope they get married one day. Corey was my cameraman. I was just straight up directing, directing, and I was also the demon in it. It's my most proud because we have certain editing shots in there. The film's not great again. Um, it's not scary at all, but the editing in there, there's a part where there's a transition between one set to another. And it was her getting sucked into a closet mm. and then her coming out of another closet in a completely different scenario. Nice. And we edited it to where it's seamless and we filmed it seamless. And I was so proud of that. And, you know, we have certain production of things cause it takes place during Christmas time and uh, all this stuff. And then on um, fable hunters, I wrote eight episodes for a show called fable <laughs> hunters, which is going to be paranormal activity, but a horror comedy. Okay. And it was going to be mixed with like uh, these guys, this guy who's a demon hunter who he can possess magical, like toys come to life. And he, nerf guns he could use that's how you defeat these monsters and um i love it it's almost 30 minutes um and it was my most it was the hardest thing i ever made and it's my least viewed one and i was so pissed <laughs> because i took my time with this dude like we made this because i made it Corey, who's very doesn't like acting i made him the cameraman for it mm -hmm. who actually had to speak his girlfriend was a big part of it our other friend a part of it and I was a part of it, and it was a big thing for this. Um, we filmed in illegal locations because we had to have uh, certificates to film with more than a certain amount of people, and we did not follow those rules. Um, Guerrilla filmmaking, man. Guerrilla yeah, filmmaking. Yeah, then we have um, uh, this music video I made for Third Ocean, which I'm actually planning on making another music video for my friend Colin, which you met, Kyle. Mm -hmm. you met him almost, I'm planning yeah. on making one for his latest song. Um, I'm very proud of this music video. I'm not going to play the song, but very proud of how this one turned out. Very, very proud. Um, then my Deadpool's downfall. The funniest thing I've ever made. I have five copyright strikes on this thing. Jeez. And one day it will be taken down and I will be so sad. Um, I took La La Land music and put it into the intro. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but I love it. Um, as you can see, um, yeah. Deadpool, Deadpool. Are you wearing those right now? Those those boxers? Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, those are. Over my closet. And then look, it zooms out. I did my own La La Land opening, so it's playing the La La Land music. Yeah. This is going on. Um, that is my first Funko Pop ever. Moving Makes through. Do, 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 do. Deadpool. <laughs> I I love this short dude, and we did a, a lot of different things on this as well. I missed that Funko Pop with the cowboy. I sold that. I still have the Chimichangas van. Oh. I don't. Have when I sold that, I sold that dinosaur somewhere. Um, I don't have that statue anymore. I have you a different don't. One. No, oh. I have a great. I have the X Force one now. Hmm. I traded up, and it's me showering. <laughs> Here I come. 
Oh my god, there he is. But one of my favorite and let me see if I can find it. Um we it's a very R rated um <laughs> I'll show you this scene. It's a very R rated uh movie. Oh my god. <laughs> we have my own scene of me getting ready for my date because I'm going on a Tinder date. I actually hurt myself there, broke oh. all that. Not surprised. Me getting ready for my date. Choked myself. For <laughs> and, real? Yeah, whole, for real or yeah, just in the story? For real. The whole short is about a man who's oh. obsessed with Deadpool, who thinks he's Deadpool, and his wife leads him, leaves him, and it's oh. his downfall. We actually wrote a sequel to this, and we plan on making it one day, because, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. We also have a fucking feature film written that's in this vein of fucking Kevin Smith, man. Now... Mm. This is the best thing. So I put the Tokyo Drift song on to this. Oh my god. Me riding a tricycle. Now I want you to know, I rode this for three miles to get to where we had to go. And we filmed every aspect Holy of it. Shit. This Holy is crap. how... Th this is... <laughs> literally on the main street. I want you to know we were... <laughs> we were on... A were, they on a, were they on a car? Were they on a yeah, car? Yeah, they had the back of the car okay. open filming. Okay. Oh my god. film the whole thing jesus christ <laughs> and then i parked it and then i did i park in the handicap yeah i parked it in the handicap dude oh this lady God. yelled at us so if you notice there's a weird jarring cut right there now if you notice yeah. i'm not in the handicap anymore because a yeah. lady yelled at me uh, and then i go on my date i have my sunglasses on of course I tell the girl as I walk up that I tell her this is not who I got. You catfished me, you dumb bitch. And then I attacked her and ran off. Oh my god. And then I rode the bike all the way home while it's playing If You Had a Bad Day. <laughs> and then this is my dad. He makes a cameo. Let me see. Oh, Papa Pope. He throws a rubber ducky at me. Oh my god. And then I threw that. But it doesn't fall because it has two wheels on the back. Yep. And then you go in. I shut the door. The end. But there's an end credit scene of me eating a PB&J. Of course there is. But there, it even goes worse. Please watch. You fall in the pool. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course. Uh, dude, it's my I, I I love it. And now we actually do have a feature film written. Um, I don't know if we'll ever make it. We planned on making it. Like we got the money and everything. We just needed a location. Mm -hmm. Um, it is the most fucked up thing I've ever written. It's the most. <laughs> it's literally Kevin Smith would direct this thing. It's imagine Home Alone, right? Mm -hmm. But it's from Marv and the other guy's point of view. Imagine okay. they decided to rob someone. Mm-hmm. And they happen to go in the house and the house locks down purge style where no one can leave and no one can enter. And it turns out this family is a cannibal. Oh, nice. Before Christmas. Um, and that like the, the father and the, and the wife are very weird, but they, they thought it was only them and one other kid. Turns out they have a fucking another child. And this other child is a man baby. I was going to put my friend in diapers. Oh in my God. It, it was batshit crazy, man. Um, there is a sex scene we wrote in there where the wife and the husband are dressed as Winnie the Pooh and Piglet and oh playing with God. Hunt. Um, and it was just all from the point of view of the robbers. Mm -hmm. And then the ending is just a blood fest. Um, we wrote it all. I, bought, I literally bought most of the props, too. And, you know, I just got busy. I started doing the YouTube stuff more, so we couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, again, maybe it comes out in one day. That's why I didn't say the ending, because I love the ending. Um, you know, but I was we were, I was really proud of that script. Um, I was really proud of that script. And, you know, I miss doing it. You know, I made this three years ago, and I would love to do it again. So, Yeah. And and what is the next big goal for you? Because we talked oh, about yeah. what you're most proud of. Uh, but so now what's the next thing? You want to be proud of the next thing you want to do and you really want it to work because I'm sure you want to do several things, but I'm sure you can live with a failure if, if some of them fail, but there's so, one, there's one you really want to work. 
uh, I have a book series I want to write. That's my next big thing I do definitely want to do. Um, and then that next thing is I did apply for BFCA, um, the Broadcast Film Critics Association. Um, I've also pro- applied for Rotten Tomatoes. I was denied for Rotten Tomatoes. Whatever. Same. BFCA, though, this is the thing um, I have not heard back yet from. But I've talked to the lady who's in charge of it. Mm-hmm. That one looks more optimistic. I'm not. I'm not trying to get my hopes up on anything. Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. Um, the lady who's handling it is very, very sweet. Um, we'll see where that goes. But definitely the book. Definitely the book. Um, the book series I want to write is Mad Max mixed with Lord of the Rings. All right, Zach. Before I let you go, uh, there's two or three more questions I want to ask. Quick questions. One of them. Let me know who is the person you want fans of, of movie reviews on YouTube to tell me three people you want to hear people talk about more. Like like they're not big? Not that they're not big, but maybe they are big, but you don't see like a wide spread of people talk about them like on the Twitter sphere or, or sharing their videos. And whatnot. Well, that's my thing. I don't get why like movie reviewers aren't like into that million dollar club like why there's not more of us because like mm-hmm. there's chris and jeremy but i feel like there should be more you know everyone loves movies yeah. everyone loves talking movies but you know everyone watches videos of fucking elmo getting ran over um yeah. and i don't love it um honestly i'm gonna stick in our realm i think there's three people who i see and i'm like they deserve more credit than they get and mm-hmm. if i leave you out of this guys there's so many more i i'm just gonna start naming people i'm not even gonna say three i'm just gonna start naming some people you mm-hmm. Rudy oh. from movie, Rudy movie reviews, um, Jared Buckendall, I fucking funniest guy I've ever met. Rudy, very creative. You, I just think you, I, I get jealous of everything you fucking do. Um, Griffin <laughs> from Film Speak, I mean, he he says stuff that I'm like, I do not get how your your mind even gets there, but I, I'm jealous. Sharonda from Paraway, uh, Kristen, um, Kristen Maldonado, right, yeah, Ma- Mandala. I cannot fucking say her name. I'm so Maldo, sorry. Mal, Maldo Nado. Yes, her definitely. Um, Christian Uhlenberg, um, uh, uh There's so many. Uh, Dwayne. Uh, everything he's creating at Cinema World, that that deserves way more. Um, and again, there's so many more I'm like literally blanking on right now. Um, uh, Ryan, I think Ryan has such a love for movies. Um, oh my God. I'm like trying to go down. Cody Leach, uh, 3C Films, uh, Sean Chandler. Uh, Randy Jones, great, great, great writer. Uh, Jimmy Champagne just made an awesome Halloween short film. Uh, Matt from Next Best Picture, huge. Um, there's so many people that I've been in contact. Patrick Burrow, that I, I watch their videos, and I'm like, you guys deserve more credit than you get. And I wish I could just, like, give all the subscribers, you know. And, you know, I'm sure I'm blanking on so many more, and I feel bad if I am, but... You know, I just, I don't watch a lot of YouTube, but when I do, it's, I watch their reviews and I watch yeah. your guys. And there's so much that I'm, oh, Geekly Goods, uh, Leo. Leo. <laughs> Our uh, boy Luke. Leo. Uh, Luke as well, you know, um, I could just keep going on and on, man. There's so many yeah. people that deserve so much more credibility and it makes me worried YouTube will die one day. Yeah, same. Um, all right, last two questions. Zach, I asked you a ton of questions today. You get to ask me one question. Okay. So I get to ask you one question right now? One question. Hmm. Do you see yourself... I have, I have two. Sorry, I have two, but they kind of connect to each other. <laughs> do you see yourself doing this for the rest of your life, movie reviews, or do you see yourself eventually gratifying and going towards filmmaking more stuff like that and on top of that do you wish you would have started this sooner uh so answering the the second question first because it's the the quickest answer yes a hundred percent million percent yes uh the first question well you know i'm i'm a filmmaker first that's what i want to do in my life i'm a writer i'm a director that's what i am so I don't necessarily want to do movie reviews for the rest of my life because if I make it to being a filmmaker, I think it's unfair to review my peers' movies. But you know what David F. Sandberg does with his channel, doing behind-the-scenes things and maybe doing short films? I want to do that. If I make it, 
I want to do that. So the channel doesn't die. Just what I do changes, morphs a little bit into something else, still movie related. And maybe I'll, I'll still do vlogs and whatnot and say, hey, guys, this movie made by this person, it's really awesome. And maybe not a lot of people are seeing it. And I, and I want to do that uh, if if I make it. So that's my answer. And my last question to you, Zach, maybe maybe I should leave the person, the, the guest asking the, the final question to last, but... You get to give me one suggestion for the next guess. Like one thing they got to ask or? No, 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 no. Who should I have on on the next episode of Origin Story? Hmm. Chris Parker from 3C Films. All right. I want to know more about him, man. All right. Duly noted. Let's see if others in the comments vote for him as well. Zach thank you so much my friend for this awesome conversation yeah, it was great to, you. to just be here and talking to you what do you have coming up in in the near future and what do you want people to check out most when it comes to you uh honestly please support my video game reviews i'm gonna start doing more video game stuff i get asked to do it and then no one fucking watches the video so that's why i don't do them um so yeah i'm i'm looking into streaming it um, very low budget stream. I'm not going to buy a fucking Elgato and stuff, but just streaming for my console. I'm still deciding though. Like I'm still figuring that out, but I am going to be doing a top 10 PS4 video games. Uh, I was going to do one for the Xbox, but they didn't have enough exclusives for me to honestly touch on. Mm -hmm. um, so I am very excited to do that. Um, dive into more of that because movies are very much long and gone till December pretty much now. Yeah. Uh, except Mank. I think Mank is literally the only film in November besides the Croods 2, which I still have not seen the first, but just you know if you love entertainment just hit that subscribe button guys just let's move you know if you watch a video i saw someone comment yesterday they're like i've watched three of your videos i love coming back i'm like oh are you subscribed no why the fuck are you not subscribed then man <laughs> so um you know that's how it works uh but it's fun and um i love doing this the podcast with you um and just getting to talk movies every day with who i care about and who i like so yeah, for sure, man. Thank you again for being on. It's Thank just you, a man. pleasure whether we're on camera or not to talk to you. And I'm glad I got to know a little bit more of your story. This is your origin story. Ladies and gentlemen, Zach Pope, all his links in the description. Don't forget, let shit. Don't forget, let me know who you want to see in the next episode. Leave your suggestion you here with here. I, I hope one day I can get Chris Evans. Uh, leave your suggestions in the comments. Leave them over on Twitter when you see this video shared at Red Geekness. All my links are also in the description. And until the next episode, everyone, don't forget, you make your story.